The outbreak of the First World War in August 1914 started a massive recruitment drive. It was the job of Lord Kitchener, Secretary of State for War, to recruit men into the British Armed Forces. The famous Kitchener Wants You poster is a good example of how he did this. Initially he was very successful and by September 1914 Kitchener had about 500,000 volunteers for wartime service. In this example of a recruitment poster from 1915, we see a daughter ask a father what he did in the war while his son plays with toy soldiers. The poster was designed to make men feel guilty for not volunteering and to present war as a man's duty to his country. The First World War lasted much longer than the government expected, from 1914 to 1918. As the casualty rates increased, it became clear that the 2.5 million volunteers would not be enough. To increase the numbers in the British Armed Forces, the government introduced the Military Service Act in March 1916. This was a conscription law, meaning it forced men to join the military. So men aged 18 to 41 were conscripted into the military. Initially, this law only applied to single men. Then from May 1916, married men were also conscripted. As the war dragged on, the age limit was raised. And by 1918, men up to the age of 51 were conscripted. The Military Service Act of 1916 was a significant change. Before the law, there had never been large-scale compulsory military service in Britain. Many who had fought in previous wars had chosen to fight. The Military Service Act took that choice away, so men who refused to fight became criminals. There were some exemptions to the Military Service Act. Men who worked in industries essential to the war effort, those who were medically unfit, and those who refused on grounds of conscience. The men in this last category were known as conscientious objectors, sometimes called COs or conchies. A conscientious objector is someone who refused to take part in war, and there are a number of reasons why men became conscientious objectors. The majority of COs refused to fight on religious grounds. A Christian group called the Quakers believed that taking another human life was a sin, and pointed to one of the commandments in the Bible which said, Thou shalt not kill. They preferred to break the conscription laws than break the laws they believed were made by God. The next largest group of COs were political activists who did not agree with the reasons for the war. They saw the First World War as a war between empires that they had no stake in. Finally, pacifists were against the use of violence under any circumstances and wanted a peaceful resolution to the conflict. About 16,000 or almost 1% of the men drafted tried to claim exemption. If the CO wanted exemption from military service, they had to apply to a local tribunal, a special court that judged if the claim was genuine. Members of tribunals were appointed locally and there was a lot of variation across the country. Many were ex-military men who were biased. They didn't give COs a fair hearing. One 18 year old CO was told at a tribunal that he was too young to have a conscience. He was refused exemption and sent to prison for three years. It's important to understand that there were two types of CO and some did contribute to the war effort. Absolutists were those who absolutely refused to do any war related work or obey military orders. Alternivists refused to carry weapons but were prepared to help the war effort in an alternative way, such as driving ambulances, distributing food supplies, or working as stretcher bearers, a very dangerous job on the front line. This included soldiers like Lance Corporal William Harold Coltman, whose numerous acts of heroism, including the rescue of injured soldiers from no man's land, earned him the Victoria Cross, Britain's highest military honour. During the First World War, over 6,000 COs went to prison, and some were imprisoned for the duration of the First World War. The initial standard sentence was 112 days. This began with one month in solitary confinement, meaning the prisoner couldn't mix with other prisoners and was fed a diet of bread and water. They performed the prison labour tasks introduced in the Victorian era, known as hard labour, breaking stone and picking oakum. This was the most severe level of prison sentence under English law at the time. Prison was mainly a psychological punishment for COs, but some were abused physically and 73 died as a result of physical abuse. They also lost their right to vote for seven years after the war and didn't get it back until 1926. In June 1916, some SEALs were actually taken to France to the front lines of the fighting. A military court sentenced them to death for refusing to obey military orders. They were to be shot at dawn by a firing squad before the Prime Minister Herbert Asquith stepped in and reduced their punishment to 10 years in prison. The harsh punishments were meant to act as a deterrent, to stop anti-war ideas from spreading and ensure the government could continue to conscript men into military service. The media played a role in this by making the harsh punishments seem necessary. 
Wartime propaganda celebrated those who had volunteered to fight as heroes, and the COs as cowards who betrayed their country and undermined the sacrifices made by the men on the front line. Cartoons and postcards pictured them wearing dresses or performing traditional female chores. In one postcard, COs are shown wearing women's aprons and sweeping trenches, while other soldiers sneer at them. Some men were accused of homosexuality, which was illegal at the time. The British public's support for war was almost unanimous, and society tended to view the COs with suspicion and hatred. Some COs were physically assaulted on the streets, usually by gangs of women whose husbands were serving in the army, and felt that the COs should be serving as well. Here a group of COs takes refuge in a church from the angry crowd outside. The Order of the White Feather encouraged women to hand out feathers, symbolising cowardice, to men not wearing military uniforms. This was done in public to cause maximum embarrassment. Some men were sent hate mail with feathers attached. During the Second World War, 1939 to 45, Government attitudes changed, so did the laws against COs. Conscription laws were reintroduced in 1939, this time under the National Services Act. However, the political circumstances were very different to the First World War. This time people were asked to unite against the evil regime in charge of Germany that was known to persecute minorities for their religious and political beliefs. In this context, the harsh treatment of COs would be seen as hypocritical. During the Second World War, 59,000 COs registered and the government made a much greater effort to find them alternative work to help the war effort in a non-combative way. Tribunals were still held but members were no longer ex-military and prison sentences were given as a last resort. During both world wars there was continuity with public attitudes towards COs. They were attacked on the street and portrayed as cowards and traitors by the media. Many were fired from their jobs. There was change in the way that they were treated by the government. In the first world war the government gave out harsh sentences but things had changed by the second world war and the government was more lenient towards COs. In 1916 national service was ended in the UK and military conscription is no longer 